Welcome to this introductory video on how to use Rhino 7. This video is aimed at beginners to the software and will go through the first steps in using Rhino 7 and orientating yourself around the menus and features that this software has to offer. We'll begin by just opening up Rhino and you'll usually begin with these four windows on display when you open Rhino for the first time. Each of these have a different name that can be seen in the top left and these essentially all look into the same 3D model space that we're going to be using to draw up our designs, draw up our proposals within Rhino 7. Now in order to kind of see how each of these views work, we're just going to go over to this menu on the left hand side, select the box tool using the left click on our mouse button, move into one of these windows and just use the left click to draw out a square initially, left clicking again to choose where you want that square to end and then left clicking a third time to choose the height of that square and this is now formed into a three dimensional box. You can see here that we have three or four sort of different views of this box within each of these windows. Now each of these are actually looking at the same box but from different angles and that angle is told by the name of each of these windows in the top left corner of our menu. So we've got top in the top view, front and right here, and then perspective, which is a 3D angle of this box. Now we can zoom in and out on this box just by using the scroll wheel on our mouse to zoom in and out of either of these menus. And when we're in the 3D perspective view here, you can also hold down the right mouse button and use it to pan around the object just by holding around and then moving the mouse to move around the object. It's very important to have a mouse when you're using Rhino in this case because it's a lot easier to orientate yourself in 3D, zoom in and out and use most of the commands with the mouse buttons and the scroll wheel. So I'd always recommend using Rhino with a mouse in this case. So this is the four windows we have into our kind of model view and each of these can be expanded just by double clicking on the window to expand it out and make it larger. If you double click again on that same name, we go back to the four window view. And sometimes it's easier to draw things in top view. Sometimes it's easier to draw them in the perspective view. So you can jump around each of the views depending on how you want to draw out your objects and your pieces as we move forward in this video. So let's just select those objects just by kind of left clicking and dragging our selection box over them and hitting the delete key to delete them there. So those are the main working windows that we'll be working in within Rhino. And on the left hand side here, you can see our kind of main creation tools that we have for creating objects and also editing them as well. We'll be going through a few of these tools as we move forward within these videos. But for now, we're going to begin by starting with the polyline tools and the basic kind of shape tools here. At the moment, you'll see there are other tabs at the top which give you different tools you can use. In this series of videos, we're just going to be looking at the standard tools for the time being, which will kind of give us an overview into all of the features that Rhino has to offer. As well as the kind of creation tools we have, before we start working in Rhino, we also need to make sure we understand the scale that we're working in. Now we can find that just by looking at the very bottom of the page and it will say the scale down here in this little box and you can see mine says meters here. Now scale is really important in any CAD software because we always want to be drawing at a one-to-one -one scale so the objects we draw are the same scale they would be in reality. Now if you don't know what your scale is we can always tweak this as well if we go up to file down to the properties menu here and if we go to the units here, we have our model units there. And we can switch this from meters to millimeters as this is more suitable for your particular kind of file you're working on. And if you're happy with those units as well, we can then hit OK to confirm those. You'll notice if you change a model from meters to millimeters, it will try and sort of scale all the objects in there by a set amount, and this will allow them to be at the correct scale once we move it to millimeters. So usually you want to say yes to this because any objects you've already drawn in your file will be kind of scaled up proportionally so they're matching the new units you're then bringing in there. So we'll say yes there. So that means now our scale is set, we know our views, and we have our kind of menu the last thing we'll be covering in this video are the layers, which are found in this little kind of tab on the right hand side here. Usually we're set just to the properties menu, which is this rainbow wheel here, and the layers are found to the right of that, and we can open them up just by left clicking on that layer panel. 
Now it's important whenever we're working in Rhino that we know which layers we're working in to allow us to easily kind of distribute and arrange our objects that we're working with in our files. At the moment, the layer with the tick on is the kind of primary layer we'll be working in. And if we want to change that layer, we can double click on a new layer like so, and then the tick will be applied there. You'll see if you double click on a layer and it becomes active, when we start to draw out an object, the color of that object will match the layer that we're on. So you see here this box is now red because we're on the red layer. If I double click on the blue layer, select a box and draw a new box there, it will become blue. And it's important that we're using these layers for different objects as we draw and create things to allow us to easily switch between and find or lock certain objects as we move forward. You'll see in each of the layers we have this little light bulb icon and the padlock icon. The light bulb allows us to hide or show the objects on those layers. So you can see here I'm sort of turning on and off the red or the blue layer. And the padlock allows us to lock certain objects on those layers. So we can show that layer, but we can lock it. So it means we cannot select that object anymore. And this is quite useful if you don't want to accidentally delete objects or you're wanting to make sure that you just select the green object in this case and not the red or the blue. So it's always good to familiarize yourself with your layers and make sure you're kind of aware of which ones are locked, which ones are shown as you're working in your file. We can also rename these layers by right clicking and going to rename layer here to type in a new layer name for this piece here as well. So it allows us to kind of order up our layers and keep these tidy as we move forward with this file. Now that's kind of introduction to the layering panel. So always usually keep this open to make sure you're kind of aware of what objects are on which layers and so forth. If you want to then change an object's layer, so we've got our kind of blue box in this blue layer and we want to move it to the red one, we can do that just by selecting the object, going into the properties menu, and under the layer here, we can just click the drop down and pick a new layer for it. And there you'll see it matches that red color again, which means it's now on this box layer as well. So it's good to kind of get familiar with navigating between these layers and moving objects from one to the other. As a final thing we'll be looking at in this introductory video, we're gonna look at how objects are displayed in each of these windows. By default, you can see in this perspective, everything is shown by a kind of line outline here, which shows the outline of our 3D shape. But because these are 3D objects that we've drawn in this box tool here, we can actually change this by clicking on the little arrow next to perspective and choosing a different shading mode, which can be found under this wireframe option here. You can see at the moment the wireframe is selected with this dot, which means it's the kind of primary shading mode that's being used for this view. And if we change it to a shaded, we then get a solid object there that we can see. So you can always switch around these ways of viewing models just by kind of clicking on each of these to have a different way you're looking at each of these model types. And it's good to kind of play around with these to find which one suits the style that you want to best kind of work in as you're working on the model. I'd always recommend Ghosted for when you're working with 3D shapes because it allows you to see the sort of solidity of these shapes, but also be able to see through them in case you want to click on something behind one of the shapes. So that was just a quick introductory video into how to begin to use Rhino on Windows. This has gone through the kind of layering system and the object creation tools and the unit setup. And in the next video, we're going to be starting to look at 2D line drawing and how to begin to use that in Rhino to create simple line drawings within the space. Thank you for watching.